Hi, I'm Anne of All Trades, and this is Mom of All Trades. And a lot of you have been asking for my apple pie recipe, and since it's actually my grandma's apple pie recipe that my mom taught me, I figured I'd bring her along to show us how to do it. I get my hands dirty, they show me no mercy, so I just keep working. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So, first things first, you peel an apple much, much faster and better than I do. So can you show us that? By the way, we have freshly picked apples from our apple tree currently. Actually, apple pie is a fantastic way to use up all the bruised ones that are not super presentable. So a lot of the ones that fall on the ground, if we don't turn them into cider, then we turn them into apple pie. Another also is that uh, I made this knife. And so if you haven't seen my Damascus, uh, knife video, make sure you go check that out. So how come you don't use an apple peeler, mom? I don't use an apple peeler because for me a knife is much faster because then you just can use the knife and slice the apples at the same time. And they just need to be about 12 slices to an apple if it's a medium sized apple. It doesn't have to be precise because they're gonna cook down anyway. So my mom has made thousands and thousands and thousands of pies. I would say I've maybe made a thousand pies in my lifetime but she's the most hospitable, gracious person in the world and her door and her coffee table is always open for everyone who wants to come over for a slice of pie and some delicious coffee. Well, I sometimes will carve them like this. However, this is probably a little more ridiculous than is necessary. Pie is, is something that many people are intimidated by, but it really is something that's very simple as long as you don't try to make it so complicated. But because it's really not that hard, it's just very basic ingredients. Everyone should try it at least once. So start to finish, we're gonna make the dough too, which is fairly simple. The thing is actually, I also for a while was getting really lazy with my pie making and just left the peelings on, which actually didn't really negatively affect the pie in any way. So, but it does add a little texture thing that not everyone's super fond of. So you can do yourself and your friends a favor by peeling your apples first. The key to the dough is literally just butter, room temperature, you wanna use cold. good flour. And then the absolute key to it is using ice cold water. So your butter is somewhat warmish from being out on the counter, but your water must be cold, otherwise your dough's gonna be too soft. And then the other key is to not stir it too much. So one and a half cups of flour to one half cup butter. AKA one stick of butter. Then you grab your sturdiest, cleanest fork. Ooh, this butter is a tad. Hard still, but no problem at all. In fact, a cardinal sin of pie making is to like microwave and soften your butter first. But I will say that sometimes I have to take that little shortcut because if it's too hard or you didn't plan ahead enough to get your butter nice and soft on the counter first, it's gonna make it really hard to stir your pie dough. You can fasten the process up a little bit by doing it by hand. But the biggest key, aside from the cold water, is to not work your dough too much. So your dough, unlike bread making, where the more you beat your dough, the fluffier your bread will be, pie making is the more you work your crust, the harder it will be. So if you want a really fluffy crust, work it as little as possible. You basically just want all the butter chunks to be mixed in with the flour chunks. So about one tablespoon of water at a time, you just stir, pour, stir. Pour, stir, pour. Then you just start pulling it all together. And when it's enough that it'll just hold together, that's all the water you need. And I will also say that we're going to use my grandma's rolling pin. I'll be further honest to tell you, the only reason I actually have grandma's rolling pin is because I was supposed to put new handles on it like three years ago for my mom and uh, as you can see, I got right on that. We need a little flour on the counter to roll it out upon. So we don't want to work this too much, so we want to be really careful how we roll it out. If it starts sticking to your rolling pin, which it wouldn't, it shouldn't because it's pretty much all butter. Uh, but if it does, sprinkle a little flour on top. The other key to a 15 minute pie is to not be precious about the way that it looks because I'll give you a little secret, it tastes just as delicious if you don't spend 45 minutes braiding the top, which I can't even braid my own hair, so braiding the top is not gonna happen. And then you very gingerly, remembering not to worry about the way that it looks, fold it in half, get it off the counter, and then you put it into the pie dish. 
and you can fill in any spots that need to be filled in with the extra pieces like this. So now you take your apples, you put them in there. If it's like cascading above the top, you might drip into the bottom of your oven, but this is like an okay amount because A, this will make the top of the pie look poofy instead of sunken, and these will cook down okay, so we should be fine. Okay, now we put a tablespoon of butter, a cup of sugar, three tablespoons okay. of flour, oh one, two, three, cinnamon, a splash of cinnamon, good, and then to the planner goes the spoils with this, this is why I don't actually have any more nice forks anymore, is because I've bent them all on unsoftened butter. And what the flour and the butter do is that as the apples cook down, they're going to release a lot of water and the flour and the butter create a roux, which is going to make your pie filling more gelatinous and less waterfall-y. So now you unceremoniously pour it into your pie. Then you want to just let it set a little bit down in there. Oops, we have a runaway. Because you don't want any of that flour to stick to the top of the pie crust. We'll set that aside. We'll get ourselves some flour reposition here. Here's the top of the pie crust. And this one, you just want to make it look a, a little bit nicer, but... All right, when that looks to be big enough, you cross your fingers, you fold it in half, and you put it over the pie. Oh, good. We have some, so we'll even have a crust. And then you take it and you just roll the bottom into the top of the crust. And this is where I said you don't have to be too precious about it because where there isn't bottom crust to roll or where there isn't top crust to roll, it all really gets rolled together. And then you pinch and it makes the crust edges. The pie crust on this side will be a little bit smaller. <laughs> Just sprinkle a little sugar on top, just for looks. And you cut some steam vents into the top. Now it's ready for the oven. 350 until it smells like pie in the house, which is usually about 40 minutes. And then you shut off the oven and then leave it to kind of cool off with the oven, which will brown the top without overcooking the inside of the pie. And in we go. Ow! Oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> One other tip as you are cleaning up, is that if you're not really familiar with baking, they make these sweet counter sweepers, which make it a whole lot easier to clean up all of your dough mess because it literally just scrapes it right off the counter. I will put a link for those below. Huzzah. All right, the pie is cooked to perfection at this point. So time to get some ice cream and serve. Probably high time I actually make a pie server too. That flaky, beautiful crust. Obviously, you always have to do a little quality control. Molten lava. That was not properly thought through. <laughs> As I mentioned at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, a awesome, easy to use platform where you can create a stunning website for yourself. I've been using Squarespace since I started my business in 2012. It is really easy for someone who's not very tech savvy like me to drag and drop and create a stunning website with all my needs. I have a commerce section so you can buy merchandise or products that I create and sell. I have a blog, I can host photos and videos, and it's just a great resource for me. Make sure you go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash and of all trades to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace provides beautiful designer templates that you can just drag and drop your material into. And Squarespace also offers incredible customer support 24 seven. Mom, um, thank you so much for sharing your time and your knowledge with me. It is so special to be able to A, carry on grandma's traditions here in my own kitchen on my own farm but also just to have you here with me. So thank you so much. Thank you. How is it? Mmm. All right. Take this. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel in that way. If you'd like to support me in other ways, there's a link for my Patreon and merchandise below. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired, and excited to get outside and do things with your own hands as well. Cheers.